What's going on guys? Welcome back to another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create a semicircle fill animation from scratch in Swift UI. So here we've got the starting state as halfway full and when I go and tap on it, you'll see that the entire circle will fill in and we've set it up to incrementally fill in and also increment the number, the dollar figure you see in the middle. So we'll take a look at creating this, how to change the durations, how to hook it up to the text in the middle and really how to customize it to make it your own so if that sounds good make sure you start by destroying that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm hit subscribe if you're new to the channel and into iOS and haven't done so already let's get into making this animation in Swift UI all right let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project we're gonna stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this a circle animation you want to make sure your language is set to swift and both your lifecycle and interface are set to swift ui go ahead and create the project save it wherever you like i'll toss it onto my desktop and first things first let's go ahead and expand our xcode window here let me also pick a 12 pro max for our preview device let's go ahead and hit resume on the right hand side to load up our preview device Cool, so now what do we want to do? Well, let's start by adding a background color on top of uh, which we'll add our circle and our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and create a Z stack here. And inside of this, we're going to go ahead and add a color. So we could go ahead and add a standard color, but I'm going to actually use a custom color so things look a little nicer. So bear with me while I add in these values. This is entirely subjective. Feel free to add in any color you want. It's not really the point of the video, but we'll add this nice dark blue color like that. So now that we have that, we're going to want to start adding our circle track and the actual animatable circle on top of it. So let's go ahead and add in another Z stack. I'm going to add a little bit of padding on here so our circle is a little smaller and not touching the edges of the screen. And let's start adding our first circle. So the premise behind this animation is we actually want a track circle. And then we want a actual animation circle, so another circle on top of it. So let's go ahead and create a circle first and foremost. And instead of setting its background color, what we want to go ahead and do here is we want to set its uh, stroke. And we want to go ahead and set it with a color here. So we can go ahead and say color dot white and we're going to give it a opacity of maybe 0 0.3 so it's not exactly showing up uh, you know as a white circle but rather a maybe like a lighter colored circle and then we also want to go ahead and make sure we give this a stroke style and we want to have a line width here so we can go ahead and type it out manually hopefully that's the appropriate syntax we'll find out in two seconds looks like it's not so let's try that one more time looks like i've got a typo actually so there's our stroke style with a line width of 30. now on the right hand side you can see we've got this uh, dull looking circle now what we can actually go ahead and do is i can copy this whole thing and drop it right on uh, top of it aka right below it in our uh, z stack and let's go ahead and change the color here so Instead of this being white, let's go ahead and make this green. And now you'll notice that we've got something which is looking a little better. Let's maybe use yellow, probably a better uh, color here. And now what we want to actually do is we want to be able to trim how much this stroke is uh, going around in the circle. In other words, we want this to like, be a semicircle perhaps. So we can actually use the trim modifier. We can say from 0 to maybe 0 0.5. And this will stroke our circle 50% of the way. Now the first issue I see here is our stroke starts on the right hand side of the circle here and we don't really want that. We want to start at the top middle of the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and add a rotation effect on here and uh, it actually takes in a angle so we can say go ahead and rotate it negative 90 degrees aka everything will shift anti-clockwise 90 degrees just like that. So cool, looking pretty good. Now we actually want uh, an animation to occur when we tap on uh, some of the stuff here. So how do we actually get a 
uh, how do we actually get an animation to occur? So we can either add a button that it all that'll trigger it, or what I'll actually go ahead and do here is we'll go ahead and add a tap gesture. So we'll go ahead and add a on tap gesture to our Z stack. And in here, we want to update something which will tell our view to animate. So we're in Swift UI, so we can leverage a state property wrapper. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is a state. We're going to go ahead and say it's called uh, maybe fill. It's going to be of type CG floats. I will start off with 0 0.5. So instead of hard coding this uh, to here, we can say this is self.fill. And now what I can go ahead in here and do is assign self.fill to maybe be 1.0 and we'll actually see the animation take up, uh, take the 50% width here, 50% fill I should say of the circle and animate it to be, you know, 100%. Now before we go ahead and run it, let's go ahead and add a animation modifier on here and we're going to stick with default to get started. We're going to take a look at changing durations and getting a little fancier with this in a quick second. but. Let me start with the basics here. So let's go ahead and hit run. We need to run this in a simulator so we can actually get that tap gesture to start doing something. So we should start by seeing our uh, just faded out white circle track, none of the yellow circle. Um, actually, we should see the yellow circle because we're starting at 0 0.5. And when I tap on it, you'll see it'll go and fill up the whole circle. So let's go ahead and Let's start at 0.0, and let's take a look at that one more time since it was kind of fast. We start like this, and boom, if I tap, we get this filled in. Now, there's one thing that I don't like about this, which you might not like either, and that is the animation is kind of quick. So how do we change the duration? So instead of using default here, what you can use is animation, and you want a linear animation with a duration. You can also use an ease in. Let's go ahead and do linear. And this will just basically have the circle fill in in a linear uh, linear animation, so it's not going to get faster or slower, and it'll take three seconds. So if I go ahead and tap it, much easier to see that it fills in now, looking pretty solid. So let's get a little more creative with this. Let's go ahead and add a text uh, label that's going to show maybe some text in the middle of our circle. So we can actually just add it right below here, and let's say this is going to be a dollar amount. Let's go ahead and add $100 there. Let's go ahead and add a foreground color, and I'm also going to go ahead and add a system font uh, with maybe a size of 52. Let me go ahead and hit resume in the preview. We can probably get the label to show up here so we don't have to run it a million times. So there is our uh, actual text. Now as we fill in the circle, we want to uh, multiply this by whatever the fill value is so we don't actually just see a hundred bucks here the whole time we want it to change dynamically as we fill stuff in so how do we actually do that well it's pretty simple I can go ahead and here we're just gonna say self dot fill go ahead and multiply that by a hundred dot O remember that fill is a CG float so once we've multiplied it we're gonna cast the whole thing to a integer so this will start at $0 and we should see it uh, increment. So if you go ahead and run it, you'll actually observe a problem that we need to fix. So if I tap on this, it goes directly to 100. That is actually correct. The reason it's doing that is because we are setting the state here, the fill to be 1.0, aka 100. The thing is, our animation takes three seconds, so it's a little visually misleading. The number that it's uh, animating to is 100%, but we want this number to be incremented as we go and increment our actual, uh, our actual number there. So instead of doing this here, what we could go ahead and do is, in a for loop, we can say for x in 0 to 100, what we can do is we can say go ahead and plus equals 0 0.01. So we're going to go ahead and increment this. However, we also want to do this with a delay so we can make sure that everything animates nice and slow. So I'm going to say async after now plus convert this uh, x into a time interval and go ahead and do this like that. So we can go ahead and say from 0 to 100, but we don't want to wait 100 seconds. So what I could actually go ahead and do is maybe divide this by perhaps 10. 
So we'll see this uh, start off slower and then get faster. Now I'm also going to decrement the three seconds here to maybe be one second so it doesn't take super long or maybe even 0 0.5. And let's go ahead and run this and let's see what it ends up looking like. So these, these numbers you really got to play with, but um, you know, as we go here, you can see it goes to 10, 20, 30. You can see that it's actually stopping at every interval point, so it's a little subjective if you want that. Uh, however, you know, you could change it and make it as fast or slow as you would like it to be. We can go ahead and make this 0 0.3, and we can actually even divide this maybe by 15, which will decrease the delay there. Uh, hence giving us a faster look and feel. So this is kind of the premise of uh, a animation like this. You can see that it's definitely animating faster now. You can have a number in the middle and you can use this approach to make a variety of different uh, things. So you can make a wallet, you can make a budgeting app, you can make a pedometer to maybe show the user speed. Possibilities are endless. And the core thing to take away here is that we're adjusting our state and the thing we want to actually animate, which is the two field of the trim here, we have that specified as the fill, which is our state that changes. And then we're also specifying our animation here, which is linear. And we can also go ahead and make this ease in. I'm not going to show all of them because frankly, you guys can sit and play with it. I don't want to waste people's time. And then we have a text uh, label here as well. So that's how you would create one of these from scratch in SwiftUI. Pretty simple. No need to add in, you know, any fancy libraries or anything like that. And that's all I got for you guys today. So if you found the video helpful, don't forget to smash that like button down below. Super appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS and haven't done so already. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you use SwiftUI? What do you think of animations? Personally, I think it's simpler than UI Kit. Clearly, uh, it's always interesting. SwiftUI is kind of hit or miss, miss still in my opinion. So we'll see how it evolves, especially at WWDC this year. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.